we're going to be doing this week's uh, edition of Analyze This. Uh, does anyone have any games that they want to look at? That's the, the this week uh, or this this lesson. That's the topic is that you if you played some games, you can give them to me to to look at. Okay, this was uh, you were. Uh, I was. Um, you were, I was white. And your, who's your opponent? Arthur. Arthur. Okay, no, no. he's not here. No. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, what's your name again? David. David. Price. David. Okay. So David was white, and he played e4. Right. Okay. C5. So this is the Sicilian defense. Right. Okay. Knight C3. Knight C3. Okay. And uh, this is uh, knight C3 is a little bit less common than knight F3, with the aim of playing D4, which is the uh, this is the the main variation of the Sicilian is going into the open Sicilian, and then knight. Knight f3 followed by d4, but knight c3 is also a move, and it could become a grand prix or a close. Yeah. So he played knight c6. This is a good move. This controls a d4 square. And now bishop c4. So if you're trying to go into the grand prix, it's usually more common to play f4 right away. Right away, yeah, because this way uh, you get to see what black's doing. Bishop c4 uh, could have some some problems with this move order. He played, it looks like, d6, uh, but maybe bishop c4. Um, uh, I suppose uh, I suppose that e6 is a good answer to bishop c4, with the idea of blocking out this bishop and aiming for d5. Notice if you play f4 and then black plays e6, you can play knight f3 and then later you play bishop b5. Instead of bishop c4, you don't want the bishop on c4 when he plays e6 like this so much. Um, what about um, if he were to go um, on h um, a? a6? Yeah. Okay, he spends a tempo playing a6. Now you could go into an open Sicilian or you could play... I mean, won't he throw my bishop out? Huh? My, if my bishop comes out later, won't he throw it away? Yeah, you could also, you could also play g3 and develop it that way. Uh, you could do that. You could play d4, and then this is a whole different, this is an open Sicilian now. You probably develop your bishop to e2. Yeah. You could even play a4 here. And, but, it, I mean, bishop c4 is, is of course, playable, but uh, it gives black extra options, because a lot of times in the Grand Prix, you want to put the bishop on b5. But he kind of went along with you and played d6. And considering that that this bishop's out on c4, usually black tries to avoid d6 because you, you can try to play d5 in one move. So if you're gonna, if he doesn't want to play e6 here, he could go g6. And now the idea is, you know, if you go into the Grand Prix, this is a normal thing, but um, you, you aim for d5 in one move as black. e6, let's say for instance, castles knight e7, now you're trying to go d5 from d7. So generally, that's why a lot of times people, there are a lot of people that will, here will play different thing, like knight f3 or, or even bishop b5 as a move here, which I've played a lot. But if d6, they'll go into a grand prix, once black's played d6. Anyway, this is kind of complicated stuff, I guess, but, okay, bishop c4, but anyway, d6 kind of falls in with white's plans, but it's not bad. Okay, um, so d6, f4, and now e6. There's a little bit of an inconsistency here because he he could try to play d5 in one move if he hadn't played d6. But okay, so e6. It says f3, but be sure to write which piece goes to the square. So knight f3 was what? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I'm sorry. Also, you don't have to put a dash in. Like when you go f4, you just write f4. You don't have to put a dash in between the f and the 4. I've done that in 30 years. Yeah. So knight f3. Now he went bishop e7. So black is playing a kind of a passive setup against the Grand Prix attack. It gives white the chance to expand on the king's side and doesn't really hit back in the center, but it is playable. So bishop e7, um, castles, knight f6, d3. Okay, that's good. White doesn't go for d4. He's trying to keep the center strong. Castles, and um, queen e1, is that what it was? Queen e1, like this? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure about this movement. Well, I'm trying to launch an attack with the knight-queen combination. It's going to be hard to do, though. H, H, uh, seven square. 
Yeah, but you know, if you bring your queen up here, it's going to be opposed to this bishop over on e7, you know. So there's going to be, bringing the queen in this setup with the bishop on e7 doesn't look really that promising. I would say, well, first of all, I would, I would want to keep my bishop with a nice retreat, maybe like this, and then aim at some point for f5. Okay. Okay. And, but, you know, it's a good thing, though, you don't play, you, do, who sees what happens after bishop e3? This is a very common, uh, a very common blunder. What could black do here? What do you think? Any ideas? With black? Huh? D5, yeah. D5 would attack this bishop, okay, and whatever white takes or not, but he's going to have to move the bishop away, and then comes D4, forking the pieces, yeah. So, uh, so, so uh, it's a good thing you didn't play bishop E3, because a lot of people might do that. But I would start with probably A3 to ensure a good retreat for the bishop, and Maybe then later on some sort of ex expansion on the king side and f5 is uh, maybe e4. Okay, yeah, I mean a4 also, but it does. Does that diminish your chance of it does kind of give away this square. I mean, black's not going to go there right away, but there's certain things like at some point black's going to play d5, and then right. if you go here, it could get hit again. If you go here, then there could be this move. And but yeah, e4 has its points too, it, you know, it stops black from playing. In general, I think black's setup is not too bad. I don't know exactly how white should take it on, but I don't think queen e1 is... Also, it leaves this c2 pawn potentially a little bit of a problem. What about bishop um, e3? Well, bishop e3, we saw what happens after bishop oh, yeah, e3. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's why I would start with a3 and retreat the bishop to a2, a nice little spot for the bishop, and then maybe bishop e3. and. Uh, you know, in the meantime, it's a little hard for black to activate his position, I guess. But okay, so queen e1 you played. a6. So he's he's going to gain some space on the queen side. Um, okay. a6. Now you went a4. Okay, that's that does give black this, this square, and now it's a little bit annoying because c2 is... Okay, so he... Um, so a4... Bishop d7, I'm not so sure I like this move very much. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but what's the bishop going to do there? It might even kind of get in the way of supporting this b d5 move. It's kind of a routine development, I suppose. I mean, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't... But okay, bishop d7, okay. So now queen to g3. So this is definitely better than going to h4. You see what would happen if queen h4, right? What could black do now? Yeah. Where, where to? E4. Yeah, and it takes e4. So, so yeah, that's so. But it's queen to g3. This is, you know, okay. I, s I think that black should now play knight b4 at some point. So okay, um, queen to g3. It says queen, okay, queen to b6. Uh, that move, I don't like that move at all. I think that this puts the queen in a, um, it blocks the b-pawn, yeah. Puts the queen kind of out of play, and it also, you know, white's kind of planning some sort of attack on the king side. You might actually need your queen over there. Uh, so I think it's one way to, because to try to take advantage of the queen's absence is maybe to play something like this. First attacking c2. And if white uh, defends, then black could play b5 um, to put some pressure on the queen side, and with some ideas like c, oops, like c4 coming up at some point. Um, it's, uh, I don't know really where white's attack is. If white goes e5, uh, we're not going to take this pawn because this will open up this bishop maybe to come up to h6, but. Yeah, he shouldn't take the pawn though. I mean, maybe, maybe even okay, knight d5 is possible. Maybe even maybe even something like this is not is not crazy. How are you going to break through? Knight can come back to there, and meanwhile, black's gets got some attacking chances over on the queen side. Leaving the pawn on f4 is you know a good idea here, I think. And also at some later point, okay, there's also this move with c4 coming, really restricting this bishop, and then later f5 counterattacking, gaining space. 
I mean, White's attack isn't so routine, you know, and this move doesn't seem to really get anywhere because of that. And then c4 is coming. So putting your queen over on g3, you have to be a little bit careful about that. It does, it does sort of sideline it in some cases. You know, have this move, but you know, your rook is tied down there, and black can do some of the same stuff. Um, maybe even this, because you're going to have a pin here on the, let's see if this works out, because you see these rooks are, so if white wants to take the, rooks, yeah. yeah, if white wants to, if, if, if white wants to take the b-pawn, they have to, I mean, they have to trade rooks, and then now there's going to be some queen a1, yeah. yeah, so that's, I mean, black's got some considerable counterplay when you bring your queen off, but he didn't do any of that, he, what did he do, it's queen there, he went, Okay, so queen g3, queen b6, um, e5, takes, takes. Yeah, I mean, here I guess we'll have to stop, but uh, I don't know what black did because it says pawn takes pawn, or it says bishop takes. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at the Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know what did, 98, but lots of, I mean, it looks terrible for black here. This is, you know, this is awful. Very, very big attack. But so you won, though, yeah? No. Oh, you lost? <laughs> oh. I put my attack and went nowhere. It just fell apart. Oh. Well, yeah. And then I, I got some... Got yeah, some it, yeah, yeah, I don't know, because it says bishop takes pawn here, so that's not really possible. Not Maybe you, he let you take the knight and then took back. <laughs> Seems like white would win then. But. Okay, I thought I, I'd show you the game that... Some people showed me outside a little while ago. If I can, I hope I can remember everything. At least I can remember up to a point. We stopped looking at, but White was winning at that point, I guess. So, White began with d4. I don't know what the level of the players were. It seemed like maybe about 12, 1300, maybe 1600. I don't know. Uh, knight f6, c4, e6, and then knight f3. So the idea is first of all that if knight c3, the idea is to play e4, right? Black can pin the knight. This is the Nimzo Indian defense. So he played knight f3. I don't know if he knew it was, he's, met, he's avoiding the Nimzo Indian. And black played a kind of strange but not bad move, bishop e7. It's a very passive looking move. But assuming black follows up with d5, it's going to be queen's gambit accepted. So normal, more common move is d5. And then, for instance, knight c3, one of the moves is oops, bishop e7. And it's the normal opening, which has been played for hundreds of years. In the beginning of the 20th century, almost every game began with something similar to this. But, uh, so he played bishop e7 right away, and I don't see any good way for white to take advantage of that. Uh, but other common moves are b6, with the idea to control the long diagonal, and c5, which is the modern Benoni. And what ends up happening is it goes into the same pawn structure as a modern Benoni, but with black's bishop placed worse. So after c5, usually white gains a space with d5, and then these pawns are going to be traded. I like to do this, but it's not a huge difference. There's a little tactical thing. We don't need to go into that. So it takes, pawn takes, and now black puts the bishop here, g6 and bishop g7, on a good long diagonal, where it it's, uh, also protects the king, and it creates a strong play on the long diagonal. What it, Black ended up doing in this game is getting the same thing, but with the bishop on e7, where it's much more passive, and he was just left kind of with a worse position. So bishop e7, and now I think he should really go d5, because this, I mean, otherwise white takes over the center, but he castled. So white used the opportunity to go e4, and now black played c5, and this ends up getting into a modern Benoni, which is not a good form of it with the bishop on e7, we'll be seeing. And it also allows something else. But anyway, d5, I think, is what black really needs to do now to try to counterattack in the center. So what do you think you would do here as white? E5. E5, good, yeah, gain space. But why not take first and then e5? What's, what's the difference? Well, now the knight can go on uh, e4. Well, it could go to e4, and it should, in fact, whether white plays e5 right away or now. I mean... If 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 e5, I'm going to go knight e4 anyway. So, but what's the difference between? It activates the bishop. It activates the bishop. So that's why I wouldn't take on d5, because it activates the bishop from c8. That's a huge difference. It's the difference between having that bishop shut in for a long time versus open. 
So e5 uh, was right away, I think, better, and knight e4, and now I wouldn't take this knight, because after black takes back, this pawn may be weak, but the problem is this knight's under attack, and where does it go? If it goes here, black takes the pawn on d4. So the only answer is back, sadly, back home. And now I think white's going to be in trouble. I mean, this pawn is too weak on d4. Something like maybe c5 would be undermining the pawn and breaking up the structure looks, looks like trouble for white. Something like that, I suppose. Maybe d5 white can play, I don't know. But it's, it, doesn't look, it doesn't look like white. Also, there's checks here forcing this. And uh, maybe, maybe immediately knight here is probably the best thing of all. Attacking this pawn, and if white goes here, then check. And white's going to lose a pawn or have to step up with his king proudly, proudly and I mean bravely into the into the attack is not not what you want to do. So so bishop d3 would be a good idea. And then if black trades, okay, white's got more space on the king side. It's a nice advantage. But I think that still black should have done something like that. So he played c5 and white went d5. But I suppose even better. What do you think white should do? Well, no, actually, I think his move was right. But it looks tempting to go e5, right? But sometimes going forward is not always the best. Now this is under attack, and if white goes here, what should black do here? What do you think? White's taken over massive control of the center, right? But he, king's still in the center, and he doesn't have enough backing up his center, so... What should black do? D6. D6, yeah. Don't allow white to s strengthen his hold by playing D6. Instead, play D6 yourself. And now white's center is falling apart. And it's a little too early for, I mean, he'll survive. He'll get his king out, but his center is going to be gone. Black should be fine. But uh, so instead, he, white played D5, which I suppose is a good move. Um, if white does want to, to try to gain space, maybe take on c5 and, I mean, first e5 and then, and then take on c5 perhaps, but still black's going to get counterplay. So I think that uh, his move was good, okay? He gains a lot of space. Black took here and white took back with this pawn. It's sort of a matter of style because here white also stands pretty well, but I think this is better uh, somewhat because it's m much... Uh, White's two center pawns in the cen uh, against one really restrict black here. So d6. Now you see that this is the same as the Benoni, right? The same structure, but this bishop on e7, it's not where it belongs. Uh, what do you think white should do here, though? This is an important moment. This is a very common idea in the Benoni, what white, if, if you play against it. And here it's particularly important because if you can restrict all of black's counterplay, it's, it's going to be very good. So what do you think white should do? Develop the bishop so it make a castle? Yeah, okay, that's what we want to do ultimately, and that's what he did. He went bishop d3. But this allowed black to, to make a crucial... Uh, uh, a4. No, a4. Why, why a4? Is b5 threatened? I guess we can control it two different ways. So it H3. H3. Why H3? Right. This bishop isn't very bad. This is. Bishop, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this bishop okay could go to d7, but that doesn't do anything on d7, and it blocks the knights. Both knights want d7. Yeah. So there's two things. First of all, in the Benoni, this bishop, black bishop, is pretty bad. It doesn't usually. It's usually the best thing it can do is exchange off for the knight. And that helps black to control the e5 square as well. But most importantly, black is really cramped here. And when you're cramped, you want to exchange pieces. So if black had exchanged, and it's, the two bishops aren't really that important here. I mean, black could, black could be suffering much more than two bishops when if he's just has no, white, you know, if he has no space. So a lot of times in the Benoni, mostly in fact, it's really something black wants to do is to trade off the bishop for the knight on f3. Um, and white should prevent that with h3. But he didn't. He went bishop d3. And I suppose black, I think he went rook e8. Again, he should take the opportunity to go bishop g4. And white should play h3 here. Yeah, I mean, still, 
Um, B, notice B5 doesn't work. Like there's a tactical idea of B5. Here, I mean, the idea is that with bishop on G7, black could go knight takes here, and rook would probably be on F8. So here maybe white could take the rook. But the idea is that there's some check here, forking the king and the bishop. And then after this, the bishop from G7 takes the knight, and then black takes the bishop on B5. But bishop on E7 can't do that. So that black loses out again because of that. B5 isn't working. So h3 is fine, but he um, he castled. Oops. And now black went a6. Again, I think bishop g4. He should use that opportunity. He went a6, and white st and his plan is to play b5. And white stopped b5 with a4. So now is the time to play a4. Notice if white play a4 right away, which uh, wasn't necessary, black would not be blocking a6 square, so he could bring the knight to b4. Knight a6 to b4, and the knight gets a good spot where it's kind of out of the way and also bother from black and also bothers white. So, so, um, but he castled a6. I personally, like if I was, I would still con seriously consider playing h3 here. Just, and if b5, you could undermine the pawns. And then if white, if black plays b4, now you regroup the knight to c4 square, to this, this square. Um, hope White's idea is to try to create a blockade of Black's queen side, and that's that's one thing. But it's okay. He decided to play a4 and stop b5, which is also reasonable. And here, finally, Black took the opportunity to play bishop g4. If White if White got let's say Black went b6 or something, okay, his plan was probably bishop f8, right? Let's suppose he did this. Notice how cramped Black is. There's really nothing he can undertake here. He's his knight can come here, but it can't go anywhere. I mean, if it goes here, it's going to be traded. White's well, probably going to bring the bishop to f4 and cover the e5 square. So, but he went uh, bishop g4, um, which was good, and White went h3, and Black should have traded, for sure. I mean, trade this knight off because that bishop is going to be way too cramped. And then Black can continue this and plan to go knight e5, or maybe even, maybe even use this knight so that the bishop could come to its natural diagonal on f6 and hope to play knight e5 and then the other knight. Uh, also, this supports maybe to trade off the bishops, which would help black a lot, because then he would suddenly have all these dark squares under his control. White's pawns in the center on the light squares, and he'll be left with a light square bishop. So this bishop, trading off these bishops is going to really help black a lot in general. Um, but uh, he didn't do that. So then black would get kind of an acceptable game, but he went bishop h5. What do you think white should do here? What would you do here? G4. G4, yeah, he should play G4. I mean, it's understandable that, you know, you've got to be careful when you make this move that your king is not going to be exposed. First of all, you have to watch out for sacrifices, typically in these type of situations. I mean, here we can figure that they definitely just don't work because black doesn't have enough pieces around the white king. I mean, you can start off by breaking the pin and then just do that and king h1, bring the bishop over maybe to G3 or, you know, pretty soon it's white that's attacking black on the king's side. There's nothing really to be afraid of here. Uh, so that doesn't work. But also you've got to worry about long-term weaknesses. But here Black's pieces are so cramped that there's no way he can take advantage of the king side unless White's very, um, very careless. So what do you think White should do now? How are we going to continue from here? Knight h4. Um, knight h4, well, first of all, maybe there's some tactics like this. No, there isn't because this is check on e7, right? Okay, so that works tactically. Maybe maybe there's this one though. No, sorry, that doesn't work either. Okay. Anyway, knight h4. Okay, so what's your plan to take that bishop? Um, well, have the option of taking it to like double their pawns. Yeah. Okay, but these double pawns are going to help Black. And really, the thing is, I'm playing against this bishop. This bishop is really bad on g6. It's going to be shut in for a. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think, I, and again, remember, black wanted to trade this bishop in the knight. I was just saying he should do that before. And here white's spending a couple moves to go do it. And I don't think the double pawns, like let's say black goes here and then you, oops, uh, let's suppose black goes here and then you, you go and take the bishop. I don't think those double pawns are any kind of weakness. And I think white's really actually around his king a little bit weak. 
mean, it's it's okay. It's fine. It's probably decent position for White, but it's not. I don't think it's really the best that he could have caught. I don't think he should go take that bishop. Oh, another thing. Sorry, I'm missing the tactics, but maybe there's maybe there's this move though. This is another tactical idea, because the bishop is aimed at the knight. So 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 when White takes this this uh, then suddenly this aim opens up here. So you got to watch out when you put the knights over there on the side for these kind of tactics. I think that this just works. Bishop takes e4. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I could have some moves like this. You got to watch out for these type of things. And what's, but this this hits this knight, you know. Again, so black's still going to win a pawn, right? Or am I just hallucinating something? I don't know. But bishop takes e4 is looks like it works. So I don't think knight h4 works tactically. But even if it does. It's not really the best, I think, the, I mean, but you, you should move that knight. What I think you should do is knight here with the idea, first of all, this is very important square in this structure because it blockades this pawn, it aims at d6, um, and it also aims at b6, and it aims generally at the queen side, and second, it's, it, it's maybe I'll go f4 and try to in, block in the bishop like that, but I also might just restrict myself with f3. But I create this huge wall against the black bishop, and there's really no way black can come in on the king side. So this, this followed by knight to c4, f3, maybe bring the bishop to f4, we'll do some little things like king to g2, and then we're going to start playing on the queen side. So I don't know, I wish I knew how to draw arrows with this, this thing. I, guess. I feel like there's probably a way, but in any case, knight c4, it's some, and you know, f3, king g2, bishop f4, a5, and after some preparation, rook b1 and b4 to open lines on the queen side. And we're just going to kill all of his counterplay because he has no black, you know, we, we avoid any counterplay and it's just cramped and then he's going to suffocate. You know, that's a good way to win a game of chess. But uh, he went, I, he didn't go g4, at least not right away. He went bishop f4, I think, which isn't, which isn't a bad move but it gives black another chance to go and take that. It lose a tempo, but I still think it's a good idea to get, to, because you can't deal with this bishop on g6 blocked in, you know, you're gonna be down a piece essentially. Um, so bishop f4, I think black went now knight to d7, and now white went g4. Okay, so bishop g6, and here white I think went rook e1, no, no, sorry, uh, he went actually, yeah, I think he went uh, rook e1. And maybe it was even before g4. I don't remember, but, you know, they showed me outside. But basically, he said his plan was e5. What do you think? Is that a good plan to play e5? Why not? Yeah, first of all, it lets this out. Yeah, e yeah, e5 is going to allow black things, it's going to allow things to get a little crazy, and the white king is open, actually. So it also allows black to trade this off, and then this, this pawn, I think, is going to be too weak. So I don't think e5 is a very good plan here. I mean, white could have maybe, after long preparation, put the bishop on g3, bring the knight around to c4, maybe then f4 and e5 at some later point. But I would say the best thing here to do is just restrict all black's pieces and then play on the queen side. So instead of rookie one, again, I would, I would go with something like this. With the idea, now maybe we'll bring the bishop back, we'll play f3, we'll play knight c4, we'll play a5, rook b1, and b4. And then start attacking b7. And maybe there's some stuff we can do on the king side too, I don't know. But, but first we're just going to restrict all of his play. Because here black is cramped, so... Okay, so he went rookie one, I think. It was maybe it's a different move order. I know I'm going to get to the right position now. Went bishop to f8 now, okay, continuing the plan. And now white went a5, and do you think that's good? So he wants to restrict black's queen side, one pawn holding back two. And often this is a move that you play in a Benoni. But here again, I think that this gives black counterplay unnecessarily, because I think black can play this. Okay, white's going to take on passant, right? That's the whole purpose. And then knight takes, yeah, this was the position they got. And the idea is now, okay, first of all, black is a little bit less cramped. His knight can now come here, and he has a chance to play c4, knight d7, knight c5. 
He also has maybe some play on the B file. And taking the A pawn, of course, uh, will, black will be able to take on E4 in response. And even if white could, maybe black would get counterplay that way. And remember, the king is still open over there on the king side. You have to take some care. So I think this, maybe white's still better here, but I think it gives black counterplay without, n without needing to. So black's not threatening any anything. Black's not going to be able to play B5. And playing B6 has always been possible, but white's, it's going to be very passive setup for black. Then white will continue with his plan. Knight d2, knight c4, rook b1, and b4. Typical way of attacking in Benoni. So he played a5, but black didn't play b5 now. I think, I think what black played was knight e5 at this moment. And what about this move? Is this, what do you think about that move? What should white do now? Any ideas? What would you do here as white? Hmm? You have to take him back. Yeah, take on e5, right? Yeah. Okay. Which way? The bishop. the bishop? Yeah, I guess it's possible to take with the bishop, but I don't like the weakening my dark squares pretty seriously here by giving up that bishop. Black maybe play, oops. Uh, later, black will play h5. And try to, you know, I think it's better to keep that bishop. It's very important guard of the dark squares. What about retreating the bishop and letting black take at the cost of the tempo if they want to? Well, uh, this would allow black to really free his position. I mean, we don't want to trade pieces so much here. And then, for instance, this knight can come here, and then that knight's coming to e5. I think you should punish him for knight e5. Knight e5 is a bad move, because this is going to give black a really bad structure. I mean, black needed to play b5, you know, or maybe h5. By the way, h5 is also, because, because if white goes g5, here black gets some real counterplay. Now, I have a feeling, no, no, bishop was still on, was on f8. Uh, maybe he played some other move besides bishop f8, I don't know. But, but then black, black, can, black can go bishop e7 and attack the pawn on g5. When white plays g4, h4, then f6, and white's kingside is really getting opened up. You know, what, what white does here, uh, let's say queen to d2, maybe start, uh, start with f6 immediately, and it's, it's not that easy for white here. There's going to be a lot of pressure on g5. Next, uh, let's say you have like this, and this comes here, and now the rook comes to f8 and pressure on the f file, and white's, white's not keeping things closed anymore. It's not the same as, maybe white still has some, some you know, ways to, get a good position, but it's, it's better to just restrict him with being able to play f3, which is why another reason I wanted to move my knight. I mean, here you can, you can do this, right? And then f3. Okay, this is guarded. This cuts out all that counterplay. Now knight c4 is coming. Maybe black can go knight e5, though. So, um, yeah, h5 was, again, something black should try, to try to attack white's white structure. And then if the knight, like I said, if the knight retreats, then maybe he can consider playing this way. Because now you can recapture the piece. And I think this is going to be too, well, this is very, I mean, okay, the, the bishop is dead, but yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's a big, it's a, still, this is coming in here. Even though we got this stuff coming, you know, now black's got a good game. I don't know what happens if white doesn't play G that right away. Maybe it goes knight here and then G5. I mean, this bishop is dead, basically. And black's thre facing some real big attack on the king's side. But the dark squares, you know, it goes here, and now the queen's threatening to come in. Probably white should... Maybe it's too risky to play that way. I don't know. On the first glance, it looks a little... A little risky for white, but I want, that's why I wanted to play knight to d2 earlier before this was even possible for black. Then we could get the knight to c4 and black won't have... So anyway, but he went, he went knight e5, and this allows white to change the struct... Uh, what do I press here? Um, no. Go this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so knight takes e5. Now white can change the structure and this is what he did, which was good. Here suddenly, e5 is blocked, so black has no counterplay on the e-file. White has this real strong pass pawn here. And most important, this is artificially isolated. These two are weakened. 
uh, by being held back. And B4 is White's plan coming up here. So this is, I think, real tough for Black. So Black played Rook to C8 with some aim to play C4 at some point. And I think here White, again, sort of neglected his kingside safety. He played Queen A4, and I think this would, again, given Black some chances. I mean, Black's position is bad now, but it's, it was never really that great. But in any case, it's real bad, I think, now. But still, he needed to get H5. And now if this, then this is real counterplay. I mean, this is actually tough for White to deal with, you can see. So you, that's why you don't want to push G5. Here, Black's threatening to take the pawn. If White takes, then suddenly that's falling, you know, and then White's going to be lost soon. So it makes a big difference. You're going to play G5 versus F3. But here, again, Black could still try to get some counterplay like this and trying to bring the queen down to H4 and knight to G5. Maybe the bishop comes in to E7 to G5 afterwards. It's a little tricky, you, you know. Uh, Black knows what he's doing. In any position, you know what you're doing, and you, you've come up with a good plan that's it's causing problems for your opponent. Even if it's a bad position, you can still fight, you know? So I think instead of that, it was better to prob probably better to just play b3. So he wants to stop this. And queen over here really puts a damper on a lot of Black's play for now. And then later on, get f3 in, king g2, consolidate over there then maybe start preparing b4. But he played queen a4, I think it was a little too early. Now black played h6, um, which he should have gotten h5, like I just said, but h6. Now white went rook b1, so his plan is b4, although I don't know how that's going to happen because the bishop is covering that. Uh, rook to b1, and here black made a fatal mistake. Um, he went b5. So what again he had to do maybe h5 or something like knight h7 planning queen to h4 and then knight to g5 to get counterplay on the king side. But b5 uh, didn't necessarily hit the mark. So what do you think white should do now? Any ideas? Take on Take on Of course on is very important. If there were no on rule, well, Benoni would be a great opening. <laughs> I mean, it's already a, it's an okay opening, but it would be a really good opening because always there would be b5 in every position. Uh, queen takes is what black did, and now what do you think? A couple good moves here, I suppose, but, you know. Really, there's there's one that's better than the others. Hmm. Yeah, pawn to b4. Good. This you, so you weren't tempted by taking the a pawn. Maybe maybe you can take the a pawn too because this is this is under attack. So knight e4 doesn't because that's hanging. Bishop comes back there. But I think black gets counterplay. You know here, let's suppose and and there's some counterplay on the b file. Okay, white should be winning, but it's. I think his move was probably even better, at least on first glance. The a pawn's hardly going to run away, and now white's got big threats. B takes c5 is a huge threat, because that rook on b1 is attacking the queen. So black can't take back, and then it's two connected past pawn just storming everything out. If black were to take this pawn, this pawn. Yeah, if black takes, of course, that pawn is pinned. So what he did, I, I guess he saw the threat of b takes c5. He played queen a, uh, a7, but now came b5, another good move. So it's better, again, I think, than taking the a pawn, which would unpin the, like if you, you know, I suppose taking the a pawn is also quite good, and queen takes. But anyway, he played b5, which I think was, hmm? Um, e on top, um, knight, uh, a, um, c5? Knight to b5? No. Hmm? Bishop where? Taking the pawn, taking the pawn. Taking here? No, that's no. Taking this one? No. Uh, what's it called? The, uh, um, there's one about the white nut, the white knight top. The one the white, the black square. You got to tell me this, uh, the, the, the coordinates. So you're looking for something for white? C5? No, the, No. B 
Yeah, yeah, if white white shouldn't take on c5 because the the bishop. Uh, okay, well it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, I mean I I mean white's probably even here stand good. This gives a lot more counterplay. Now suddenly this knight is under attack, and again king side you got to always watch out once you play g4. I mean okay, white still even here is stands very well rook c1, and but there's no sense in allowing this things to be opened up. So I think his move was good. And you could probably take on a6, but even, uh, I mean, this move is even better, I think, because now this pawn is just even coming to b6, and white's taking a6. And the important thing, this is stay, stays there. This pawn stays there, and this bishop is blocked. Black's pieces can't get into the game. Um, white's bishop remains there guarding the dark squares. Notice how many pawns white has on the light squares. Here, 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 here. You know, so this bishop is important to guard all the holes in between. You know, so this was a good move, I think. B5 keeps control of the position. Yeah, I think that's how he won the game. I don't remember the very end of how it ended, but I don't remember what, actually what he did because at this point it was obvious Black was losing, so he kind of stopped looking. I don't remember what something like I forgot. I, anyway, I don't remember what's, but somehow. The, it was it was over fairly soon, I guess. After this, I mean, White's White's taking the a pawn, pushing b6. I I can't remember what's uh, what Black did here, but there is not much Black can do. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, we didn't really look after this point that much. I think there's a couple more moves. That I forgot what they what it was because I can't see any decent move for Black here either. But uh, okay, so what did we learn from this game? What are some of the things we learned? First of all, if you have more space, your opponent is cramped, one thing you should try to do? Avoid trades. Avoid trades, right. Especially the pieces like that bishop, which had nowhere good to go. I'm going to keep that bishop. And also, what else? Maybe try to. Um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, you need to uh, keep keep your good bishop, but also also don't be too afraid of weakening your king side in such situations. But you keep control of the position. Mm -hmm.